It's 9 o'clock. Why don't we uh, begin? We'll stand for a word of prayer and a pledge. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we can gather and uh, go over the business of the county. I pray you'll be with each one of us as we make these decisions together in this room, Lord, that we'll make the best decision for the future of our county. And again, I pray, Lord, for all our first responders today that you'll protect them uh, it's just all across the country, Lord, as they protect us and put their lives on the line for us. All these things in Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are uh, back from recess yesterday, just shy of 24 hours ago when we recessed our meeting that began at 9 a.m. on August 29th, 2022. And we recessed it just before 11 o'clock a.m. And so we are now reconvening to continue with our workshop to discuss the fire protection contract with the city of Mount Pleasant with possible action to follow. I think that Barbara had sent you a uh, email with some uh, different scenarios and she may have even come up with a couple of more scenarios this morning that she may be able to give us uh, verbally and you can jot those in. But after you've slept on it uh, tonight, did anybody come back with a revelation that they want to share with us that uh, will help continue to give us insight and wisdom as to what direction to go with this fire contract? And by the way, uh, you saw, I believe, my uh, text, at least you did, that we will not be meeting with the city of Mount Pleasant today. I don't know what happened to their schedules, but our scheduled meeting today at 3 p.m. back with the fire advisory committee that was scheduled for 3 o'clock today has had to be bumped one week uh, due to the inability of some of the city's representatives to meet so that will be three o'clock a week from today back at city hall so we're not under the pressure today that we were uh, but nonetheless we've got time now let's utilize it a anybody have any comments from from yesterday uh, new comments to start the day that'll help stimulate us as we continue this discussion oh that's disappointing I thought somebody had the answer. <laughs> well, Barbara, why don't you, for, for lack of uh, anything else to begin today with, let's kind of look at some of these different scenarios. And I think that you can kind of explain what you were trying to achieve here, but at John Mark's suggestion, and it was a good suggestion, is let's put some uh, numbers, whether they be theoretical, or not doesn't really matter we can look and see what this kind of fire protection budget might do in the coming years with an assumed uh, several variables are going to be at play uh, we know that the city budget will continue to fluctuate more than likely it will fluctuate up uh, some of these scenarios here include a 10 percent assumed budget increase uh, that may be realistic. None of us knows at this point. And then we also talked about some different scenarios yesterday, such as uh, suggesting that we split the difference with the city between where we are uh, percentage-wise at the starting point of their proposal and at the end of their proposal, which would be somewhere in that 35, 36% range. We've also got some assumptions here where we continue the stair step increase. We began October 1 at 32% and progress on uh, to begin the 2027-2028 year at 40% share of the city's budget. So, Barbara, these are your numbers. I'll kind of let you guide us through this. I'll be happy to do that, Judge Lee. Um, 
I'm sorry there are so many numbers on this page, but there are lots of different options that we talked about yesterday, and I tried to um, get those together so that we could look at the total cost over five years. So if you'll look at the first column there where it says City of Mount Pleasant amounts or estimates, um, you can see what their current budget is for the, for the current year, and that was per our first joint meeting. They may have had some budget amendments since then. I don't have that information. The next item there is their proposed budget. We do have that, um, I do have an email from the city, and that comes to a 9.8% increase. And just to keep things simple, I just said 10%. Um, if they're going to continue to add, if there's a need to, and I think that there is based on what we learned yesterday from our volunteer chiefs, um, to continue to add personnel, then I think 10% is gonna take 10% if they're gonna add three new positions every year. So I just made the assumption, and please bear in mind, everything on here is an estimate, and there's lots and lots of assumptions. But I just tried to get some information so that y'all would know what you were looking at. So there's an assumption here that the city budget will increase 10% every year. That may or may not be the case, but when I read the contract, I did not see any limitation on the budget. So um, I also wanna caution you again that I don't think we should pay from the budget, we should pay from actuals, but I think we do need some limitation within the contract that it not go up more than some fixed percentage, whatever it is that y'all decide. We can't just give them, we'll pay whatever, whatever percentage you come to of any amount. It needs to be something with the limitation. So the first column there starts with their current budget, the budget for next year with the 10% increase each year. So that's the information from the city that I use then to prepare these four options across the top. The first option says um, that column is entitled proposed contract with city with 10% annual increase in city budget. So the current contract as it stands um, it's 32% in for 23, 34% in 24, 36% in 25, 38% in 26, and 40% in 27. So you can see there how much it, this, that is how much it would cost us each year. You can see the city's budget on the left and what it would cost the county each year. And you can see as it increases. So over the course of five years, that the five-year cost to the county would be $8,350,000. We currently have budget $1,119,000. So for this next year, you can see the difference between the $1,119,000 and what it would be for, for the fiscal year ending 23, $1,203,000. That's the $84,000 difference that I talked to you about yesterday as I was doing these numbers on my phone. Um, the next column, option one, these are not in any particular order. It's just I needed to, a new heading for the column so that we could all talk about those today. So option one is, is um, increasing rates. So the rates fluctuate, <clears throat> but the max rate at 38% with a 10% annual increase in the city budget. So the first year is the same because we start at 32. The next year is a little different. Well, I'm sorry, it's 34, it's still the same. And then it begins to adjust in 25. 26, 27, and brings us down to a total five-year cost to the, to the county of $8,150,000. Option three is 36% of the proposed contract with no annual increase in the city budget. Um, I believe this would mean, I think that the discussion yesterday was the city obviously can set their budget at whatever they want to set, but we would not pay for an increase. We'd pay 36% of the 930-23 budget. So we pay a fixed 36% all the way through there, and that would cost us $6,771,000. And then option three is the same, basically the same information, but instead of 36%, it's at 37.5%. And that would cost us $7,050,000 over the course of five years. Now, Judge Lee sent me an email yesterday, and I did those calculations just on, by pencil a few minutes ago, he requested a 36% uh, fixed rate with a 5% budget increase. Um, that would cost us over the life of the, the five-year contract, $7,483,000. And then a calculation with the 5% budget increase 
at the current percentages that are in the contract at 32 percent, 34, 36, 38 to 40 percent. And that would cost us $7,523,000 over the course of five years. You know, one of the things that really jumps out at you here to me is any of these numbers, you look at where our fire protection budget goes five years from now, four years from now, you're talking about this becoming uh, just behind the sheriff's office as far as a big ticket item on our budget. Uh, it, it's, it gets very big whether it's 5%, whether it's 10% increases in the budgets. I don't know where it will be, but this is, this is a large percentage of our budget. Do we, what about the discussion, you know, John Mark was of the opinion that we had kind of decided that a five-year contract was superior to a two-year. I didn't necessarily come away with the feeling that we had made that decision. Uh, anybody have any additional thoughts on a two-year versus a five-year? Dane, are you still of the opinion a two-year would be a better deal? We really like to hear, can you mind grabbing a, grabbing a mic? There. You, in fact, you can hold it if you'd like. Or you can sit up there in the front the two row. Year, the two-year deal would be great for, for the, us as the commissioners, but it would limit the fire department on how many uh, firemen that they can hire. If you just got a two-year contract, it's just like hiring a football coach and saying you've got one year to turn this around or two years instead of you've got five years to get the seventh graders here, in, in my opinion, on, on five versus a two-year. That limits what they can hire what they can do as far as their, their staffing. Commissioners, what do you think on five years versus two years versus anything else? I like a two year plan, just so we're not committing for that long for that kind of money. The economy like it is, who can guess what five years is? I wish I could buy a brand new Silverado truck five years ago with price versus today. <laughs> mm -hmm. It'd be a deal, wouldn't it? <clears throat> I'd go for the two years as well. I think that's a pretty good idea to start off with. They'll be getting, what, 4% more? What they got now, right now, twenty eight percent of raise up thirty two percent. And two years be thirty four. Therefore, shove that mic down there. I really think this is important. We get anything that's said on the record. Well, what I was saying is... Uh, I, th I think they'll probably be able to hear it. The air conditioner just kicked on. Okay. 
You know, the other thing, I, and again, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know because uh, I don't have enough information. But it just seems, on the surface, it seems just a little odd to me. Our budget is a little over the Their budget is twice the size of ours, two times bigger than ours, three point five. Just overall, big, big picture. But yet we're going to. They want us in five years to cover forty percent of their fire protection on their budget so much bigger. It just seems a little odd. Say that again. I missed something. When well, their I mean, when their fire when their fire budget is so much bigger. No, they're overall. Their city budget is three point five million. That's just fire. That's just fire budget. Yeah, that's just the fire. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just the fire budget. I think it's considerably more than than that. But you're, I think you're comparing apples and uh, apples and oranges. Um, okay. Well, what I was just, my point was. If we can negotiate a better term for the five years, I, I, I just don't think we should close the judges and kind of judge's hands for us. Mm -hmm. if, he, if he did something that everybody's happy with, uh, that, would make, that would make a lot of sense. But then again, we always fall back on that too, because it's not something. Because this is just, this comes up with real money for us. You know, I, I liken this to. Let's say that the city decided that they wanted to get out of the uh, road repair business. You know, they wanted to quit having to deal with potholes, and et cetera, and they asked the, city, the county to take over all of their road repairs. Would you rather, and we agreed on a percentage amount, would you want to get a five-year contract out of them or a two-year contract? Well, of course you'd want a five-year contract. You're getting ready to gear up with manpower and equipment, uh, you're going to be wanting to buy as far ahead as you can with oil and, and materials. Um, so we understand why they want five years, and we've got to understand that they're the ones that have the investment in the, in the personnel, in the capital goods. Uh, they're the ones with the primary risk. You know, we are essentially, you know, renting a service from them. And I understand why they want five years. It, it only makes sense. And in my opinion, we ought to want something longer than that. Now, do you want to put a clause in here that says with a 12-month notice you can back out of this? You know, if you've just got to have that. You know, I don't, I don't know what your safeguard could be here, but yeah, I, I think you're exactly right, John Mark. If we can structure this deal where we can live with it and put in some safeguards here, possibly limit the annual increase in their budget, uh, like Barbara is suggesting. I mean, there's different ways you can you can form this contract where you've got some idea of where you're going over the next five years. One other thing I was going to mention, you can't talk about this up here today when we stepped out. I thought this was a really important point. Uh, if we can lock in a lower rate uh, down the road, you know, it, it, it's significant savings. Like you, know, you, were, you, know, you were telling me yesterday, it's like, you know, if you can lock in something less than their proposal of 40% and you're five, I mean, that's a significant savings to the county. And that is something to consider as a benefit to doing a little longer term. Well, you grab that microphone, Barbara. I need to call something else to your attention about the numbers there that I did. Um, there's no capital outlay included here. So if there's a need for a fire engine or a firehouse or anything like that, that would be in addition to the amounts that I calculated. Um, I went back and looked at their budget and, and confirmed that. For those of you that would like to have a, uh, uh, an, an out, say, after two years, in other words, I want to commit 
I want to see how it's going for a couple of years. Um, be thinking about what some alternatives are. Is your fire protection budget getting to the point there after a couple of years or three years to where, you know, there's got to be a cheaper alternative? Um, and, and maybe there is. Uh, could the county form its own fire department and build the buildings, buy the equipment, staff? staff it with professional firefighters of an adequate number where we are completely self-reliant and don't need the city, uh, I don't think we have any idea of what those numbers could be. Uh, we certainly can't fund it out of our current budget. I think that you would be looking at uh, an emergency services district, in my opinion, unless, again, you come back to that conversation that we're only going to provide a certain level of fire protection in, in our county and, and we're willing to calculate that risk and pay only for uh, what we feel like we can afford. I, I don't know what your other, what other thoughts you might be envisioning. You know, I know years ago when we talked about the fire contract 10 years ago, um, you know, that was what some of the members of the court were thinking back then. You know, boy, once you get to a million dollars, we don't need the city anymore. We can, we can form our own fire department. Judge, uh, are you aware of any counties like, I don't know, Hopkins County or Hunt County or any of the counties that are more our size that what they do? Do they? I'm not aware of any county that runs their own fire department around here. Hopkins does. Hopkins does. Yeah. Okay. Hopkins does it. Upshur County does. Well, it until, until you get to the bigger counties that do have emergency service districts. But Hopkins does have emergency service districts. I don't think Hopkins County has an emergency service district. Yeah, yeah. they've got a county fire. But it's not. Their tax it's, rates it's not ours too. What? Their tax rates double what our tax rate is. It's expensive. <clears throat> yeah. So the city started with. 40 percent you know that was what they wanted 40 percent next year you know when we first started talking with them that that we need to pay our 40 percent share we talked them into going stretching that out over five years so i think that's good that they've worked with us on that deal then we've had all these meetings and everything i think the five-year plan i can see that being a good rest easy do some planning i understand that so if they were going to work these figures with a five percent increase each year that would be a pretty good plan right there instead of basing these figures every year off of 10 percent increases I'd go with that to where we end up with 40 percent so what you're saying is just lock them in and say well yeah we'll I don't see ever to going to increase for a year yeah I don't see ever going to a county fire department um, it's too expensive so John Mark you was talking like about that I'll, I'll throw this in if we go with a ESD or whatever, then we've got to abide by by the Texas Forestry Service, or not Forestry Service, but the uh, Fire Protect Texas Fire Protection, with all their rules, regulations. You've got to, all the paperwork and everything else that, that has to be filled out, and it's a two in two out rule, and and uh, as far as you know, going into a structure fire and all of that. So you're looking at a considerable amount, plus you've got to have a place to, to house the, the equipment. You've got to have at least six guys, if not seven or eight guys on payroll, you know. So you're looking at a big, big, big chunk of money. I mean, just like their budget, 34. I mean, uh, three, three million four. No, that just means that just that's means what you know. You're going to be looking at something like that when you, when you start that. Goes up 10 Plus building. That's just the amount Buildings of increase from one year to the next. Uh, and, and all of that. Was, so. I, don't, I remember a few years ago, the commissioners, numbers, for example, seriously with considering that. I always kind of questioned that. It didn't yeah. seem like that would add up. It, 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 it don't that. make sense. I mean, it just don't make sense. This what we're paying, we just barely pay about eight firemen full time. Well, you know, not to mention everything else they have to have. So. My two cents on it are, I think what Barbara's saying makes a lot of sense and what Commissioner Fitch is saying is if we could lock in 
a percentage increase. So we know we, we, we have, a, we, it's not so unknown. And if we can lock that in and lock in a percentage that we all agree on, it makes a lot more sense to me to go ahead and do a five-year contract. Because a lot of, I think the concerns about the two, the reason why y'all want two years is the unknowns. We don't have any clue of how, how I mean, we've had some conversations about this. I mean, just so much of it's so unknown, and it could be such a big map, but that takes a lot of risk away from us, and it gives them what they need. So that makes, that makes the most sense to me. And I can see them uh, possibly be willing to do that. They might have some caveats there for uh, capital outlays. It's going to be several years before they have to get a, a new engine. At the point when we had a third station, is that when we buy a new engine? And not until then, but we can do without one until then? Probably so, yes. Yeah. Because I, I think when they pull that one, what they what they call blocker one now, that they're using that on the interstate and all, when they pulled it, I think it was right at 20 years old. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember exactly. Marcus, do you know what model it? He said, last I heard, we probably got the new engine replaced one in two years. Uh, Marcus, do you know what Half of whatever we pay, if, uh, we're not paying the percentage of the lease payment, whatever that ended up being. You know, maybe that's a fifty thousand dollar a year lease payment or something. Well, for those of you concerned about the five-year contract, would a would a cap would a cap on the annual increase uh, be satisfactory? Yeah, I'm good with a five-year contract, whatever we can agree to. I can see where that uh, is going to halt. Or, and it's a headache every two years for everybody, and then our planning too, so I, don't, I understand five years is better. I'd go for that. They would go with 36% on the five-year uh, contract. Okay, say that again. If they would do the 36% on it, I would agree to a five-year with a cap on how much they can increase their budget? Yes. Well, that's, you're, you're saying two different things. Let me let me be sure I understand what you're saying. If you're saying, okay, I've got two guys. Let's go one at a time. Anybody that wants to talk needs to be on a mic. If you're going to go with 36 percent, you would keep it there. You'd start it at 36. No. Keep it at 36. No, we're the stair step approach on it, like Don was saying. 32, 34, yes. stop yeah, in the third it, year at 36. Yes, we could do that. That'd be fine. I think that'd be better for our budget right now. I don't, th I don't think it, we, we could take a hit like that right now. I think it's a lot of money. Well, the first three years would be the same money, wouldn't it? They're 32, 34, 36. You're just affecting the last two years. I just want to be sure I understand what your suggestion is. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to save us a lot of money doing the 36 percent. and. Uh, but yeah, just start out like uh, 30 30 percent the first year. I mean, just go up to two or three percent, whatever it takes to get to that 36 percent. We need that fifth year. So in other words, percent. you would never you'd never reach 40. You, you would stop no, at 36. I, for the five year, I would agree with that. But yes. Would you suggest that the, the initial 32, the second year 34, and the third year 36, and the fourth year 36, and the fifth year 36? Well, that'd be fine too. I just, I just, figured if there's a way we can space them out within five years, I mean, whatever the percentage may be on that, you know, as long as we get to 36 percent in the fifth year. Are you coupling that along with a, a cap on their annual budget, or is that not any part of your equation? Yeah, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah. In other words, Barbara's figures here, if you look at this far left column yeah, here, that your, yeah, your current, uh, 
you know, this, this year's city budget for fire protection is 3,761,000. If we assume that there's a 10% increase in their budget year, next year it goes to 4,138. The third year it goes to 4,551. No what? That's for their budget. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I just, just 36%. I don't, I don't know. I think it's a lot more. I, I think that they've proven their case that 40% is a reasonable share of expenses between the city and the county based upon the response rate that they give to the county. I personally think they would be a lot more amenable to uh, a cap on their annual fire protection budget than they would stop and shy of 40%. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I think that's a better deal for us. I'd, much, I'd be much more willing to pay 40% of a capped figure than I am to pay 36% of an unknown increase. What's made me nervous this, since the beginning is this unknown. I mean, just Commissioner Applewhite brought this up to me. We talked about this. I mean, it's like we're just completely at their mercy. You know, not that they're not responsible. I'm not saying they aren't, but we don't know. We don't know what that what the commitment the city council look like in five years. There's just a lot of unknowns. And if we cap this, that we're willing to pay a certain percentage, whether that's five percent or a ten percent increase or something in between, uh, that just makes a lot more sense we can plan better and I think that makes Barbara more comfortable does it doesn't it absolutely there has to be a limit we we simply cannot say agree even to a 10 percent increase because you well actually you can do whatever's the pleasure of the court but I would recommend that you not approve a 10 percent increase even that I mean those numbers get really large very quickly so I would suggest that you go with some other number, five percent, if that's what you think is a fair. Well, well nobody said anything about ten percent other than us. I think Chief McRae, honestly, if he were standing there, would tell you, I don't expect our budget to go up ten percent each but year. But actually, that's what they're doing this year. Mm -hmm. Their budget well, is going. Well, and here, here's some of the comments from my conversation with him about that. Um, you know, with council approval, which I assume they've already gotten. A uh, 10 percent raise across the board with some positions, this is within his department, receiving as much as 20 percent due to step pay adjustments to produce equity among the different positions. Longevity pay is an annual bonus based on a set amount times number of months. A maximum Christmas bonus of $100 a year. Uh, his staffing projections, we already know he's trying to get there to 45. Bottom line, he says, 2023 budget has significant raises that will not occur each year thereafter. Um, believe him or don't believe him, I think he would try to tell you that 10%, they realize this is a big increase this year that he does not expect the council to continue to go along with hereafter. Believe it or don't believe well, it. Then they, I don't know. Then they would be more likely to agree to a five percent cap. I think so. Would you? Yeah, we got you. Would you just give him yours, John Mark, or, or put it back on the podium? Yeah, I, I think so. The, the question that I have had is how many. Per fireman, we don't have about that figure at all. The total package is about seventy thousand. Okay. And, and he's wanting fifteen more firemen to, to add, get us to. Add, he's adding three this year. But the number is fifteen. To add, he wants to add a total of twelve, not in, including this year. In other words, we're at thirty-three. He wants to be at forty-five. That's twelve. Three of them are added this year. That means nine more over the next three years. So let's assume three, 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 three. That's 140,000. That's 70,000. I just need how many firemen each year because that's going to include it in that budget. And, and that's, a, that's a significant you know, increase in that budget each year. You know, if you say three firemen, that's, that's $210,000 a year just if nothing else changed other than that position. 
So, you know, that makes your 10% not that far off. I didn't have that information. I didn't talk to anybody that way. I just went at it at what's their current budget and what's their, their proposed budget for next year. Uh -huh. The figure for the 70000 I questioned that, that would go down over the year. The, that figure is getting them in here, getting them hired, getting their bunker gear, getting their radios, getting their uniforms, everything they have to have. So in the second year of that, they wouldn't be 70000 a piece because they've already got their gear, they've got their radios, they've got all their equipment they have to have. That's what Larry told me because I questioned him on that. That I don't know, sir. And that's what I thought. Yeah. I mean, that was the figure he gave me. I said, what is the total package every time you add that additional package? What does that do to the budget? 70000 was his figure. Yeah, and that's what he told me, but he told me that included, included getting all their gear and all that, that that 70000 would go down a little bit. But it won't go down much. Well, not I don't know how much. Well, not 12 positions in the next four years. Right. And there's three coming this year, is what he said, it's already being done in budget. Yeah, and then three, and maybe next year, then three the third year. So. increases figure those figures if they'll go for that another thing uh, as far as changing times in our economy and everything going on uh, what saying that we're leaving, leaving them unlimited to raise their budget I think we know about that with all these fire the fire uh, board that we created uh, with a judge there and a commissioner would hear firsthand we should be able to plan if these things are going to happen where we can make some adjustments uh, and negotiate with them if they're planning on Change in something cost us more money. Well, they're again rather than getting into their business on a line by line basis, I think that's maybe where the percentage of a cap on the percentage increase each year. Um, I percent would be pretty tight. Maybe for them. But that's an incentive for them to keep their expenses as low as they can. Thank you. I'd rather just have just no have no uh, just give them a set rate and that's it. You know, that's my opinion because you know, you look at these numbers down here. That's a lot of money that we have not uh, over the five that uh, set. They're proposing it's eight over eight million four hundred over five years. That's a lot of money. Well, even if you could t even if you could fix that. Even if their budget stayed identical and all they did was add those three new positions, you know, he's explained to us why we need the 12 additional positions. He's gonna, if he's going to take on the responsibility of the county at the higher level and devote more manpower than the current contract states, he's got to have more people to do that. So what is our argument? Well, we just don't want to pay for it. Or we don't think you need extra firefighters and you want to be able to do it. I think we got to be able to justify it somehow, some way. If our justification is we don't want to pay that much money, well, say that. But I think we've got to have some kind of basis for, for what we're thinking here. If you disagree with their 40%, Say it if you disagree with their continuing increase in their budget. You know, there's got to be some kind of position that the county is taking if we want to make a proposal. I agree with the 40 percent. I can't uh, argue any way around their arguments why that uh, seem the figures. I see that 
you know, that's probably our share, 40 percent. They always send plenty of people when they come to a fire. Um, and let's just say that at 5 percent is no guarantee. I mean, it probably, it may not be 10 percent each year. And they said they would give us a re refund each year after they get audited if it's, if our figures are off. So, I mean, they're trying to be fair that way too. So I would propose to do this plan up to 40 percent in a five-year step here with a 5 percent cap on fire expenses for them. At 5% increase. Well, and that, that kind of goes along with what I think. If there is a weakness in this, I, I think the biggest fear of mine is our inability to keep a check on what their budget does each year. This would give us a little bit of check on their increase of their total budget. I mean, 5% is pretty, pretty tight. Well, that won't even pay for their three additional firefighters each year. At the end of five years, it saves us about 700000 versus the 10%. That would be your so position. They, they keep the current 32, 4, 6, 8, 40. Mm -hmm. We cap their budget starting with this year's 3.761 at a 5% increase each year, and we go with a five year contract. Yes. Be my proposal. Keep in mind, though, that uh, the 70000 a piece that uh, we're just paying that. That's not all of ours. That's in that 40% of ours. That's 70,000 be 40% of that? Yeah. Not the whole 70,000. Yeah, it would be 40%. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm let me be sure I understand the question. There's 70,000 for the, for the uh, three, three, three firefighter. Our, our part of that wouldn't be but 40%. 40% of the 70,000. Well, not only do you have that limitation, but if you, in Fitch's proposal, if you cap their annual budget increase at 5%, 5% really won't pay for those three new positions. So you're effectively not paying the full percentage for those three new hires each year. So we're not telling them how many people they can hire and whatnot, we're just saying, we want to keep, we don't want this thing just to have an infinite ceiling. It's closer to what the Commissioner Ackermont wants in that being a fixed amount. I don't, I don't have a problem with fixed amount. I, I think we've got to have some hold there to, to be able to, you know. It holds them to 5% increases in the I'm curious. Well, here's the thing to consider. We don't know what the cost of fuel is going to be, other equipment that they use all the time. But I think we can safely say that the county employees will not get a 5% raise anytime in the future, within the next three years, certainly. But, but Judge Lee is correct. If they need to add three more positions, I mean, that's going to take up more than our, our, our increase that we're going to give them. They're going to wind up paying more of that. But I think it's a good negotiating point to begin with for y'all to go back to them and say, here's, here's what we think we, we can agree to. It's, it's a good starting point. The thing to keep in mind is once we get, if we get to 38 or 40 or 36 or whatever it is, we won't ever go back. So we don't need to be in a hurry to get to that number. And the current budget is at 28%. So if we start at 32, we're already giving them a 4% increase for this year, this, the next year. I think that part of our argument could be in this capped situation is that we're, we're kind of the opinion that we're not always going to be 40% of your calls. As your footprint expands within the community, as you engulf these big new businesses and housing developments, 
We think that after five years, when it's time to renegotiate this, that 40% may be a little excessive. Um, I don't know what else I could do to, to argue my point as to why I want some kind of a ceiling on this, but I mean, that's about all I can come up with at this point. But I do feel like this is where the gaping hole is. So I would say I like Fitch's suggestion. Uh, I can go along with that. I can live with that. And again, this isn't for the rest of your life. This is, this is five years, and five years come along, and you know, maybe time to renegotiate. And we can, and, and, and even they can say, "Yep, yeah, you're right. We're uh, we're making less county calls, or we're making more county calls. I don't know, but uh, we know that the city's got an aggressive expansion plan, and as more population comes, and as we see business growth, and I believe that we will continue to." I'm hoping that that 40% is not uh, a representative of the county burden on the city. We're not, uh, we're not saying this is including capital outlay also. I mean, we realize they're going to need a new ladder truck or a new engine, fire engine, or something sometime in the next five years that we'll, we'll have to budget that. That's not what I'm doing. Not what I'm doing. Oh, it's not with capital outlay. I thought I heard you say. It well, was. again, the way in, in the old days, well, that'd they be great. Used, in the old better. days, they used to buy. They used to yeah. write a check for that million dollar truck. And years. we're all of the opinion that leasing those major purchases in the future is the way to go. Okay. Even even well, building that, even building that third station, uh, you know, you can, you know, do that with the bond issuance and keep those payments pretty low. Yeah. Okay, well, good. Uh -huh. I make a motion we offer them well, 5%. Take, let, me, let me just get some more input. Right, uh, based on what Fitch has thrown out there, what do you not like about it? What might you suggest different? Danny, you still like a fixed amount yes, sir. for five years? What would that fixed amount be, in your opinion? Well, my, my thoughts is... is their county runs and whatnot may go down over like like you were saying there over the next five years because with what they're annexing in, I mean, and it seems like every time you turn around they're annexing something something else. Well, they're taking more of ours when they do that, more of our coverage and putting it in the city. So there, there's a good possibility, I think, that 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 you know their runs actually to the county would would uh, decrease them. And I think a five-year period of time will we'll allow that, that. Yes. to we'll materialize, that. Yeah. whether we're right or wrong. Yeah. And at that time, then you renegotiate based on, well, what's happened here over the last five years? Yeah. Judge Lee, can we not put something like that in a contract that said after two years we'd want to re we evaluate the run count at that time? Sure. You never know until you ask. Here again, and I, I've said this before. And I don't know if I've discussed this with you. You know, if you if you look at this piece of paper as, as the county, and you've got the city in here, the total dollars expended for fire protection is going to be based on what is the population within this county, and who is going to pay for that burden. Every time you add an additional dollar to county fire protection. These people are paying it just like these people are too. And so what you're effectively doing by the calculations and the, and the contract that we're doing here is effectively putting more of the load on these people out here by reducing their budget in the form of a contribution into their budget. 
you pass more of that burden on here. So we've got to, for a, at least for a little bit, take a global perspective of what we're doing here and understand it's not us versus them. We're all in this together. It is what is the best and fairest share of the allocation of fire protection resources within, within this entire county. It's not that, you know, everybody in the county is the one that's getting stuck by this contract, no. Everybody in that city is paying it as well, but with what the county, with what county people contribute to that city budget, theoretically it, it lessens that burden on the people within the city that don't have anything to do and don't care about county fire protection. You know, the total total dollar spent is going to be the same, assuming we if we want to maintain a given level of of minimal fire protection within this county. your disposal the facts and figures that warrant that yeah I, I think it's premature for you to be telling them well we don't think 40 percent is well, no way we, no. we know that 40 percent is correct right now but yet they're allowing you to pay 32. yeah if, if, if everybody's comfortable 40 percent is what should be it's just that Barbara's point is, is correct it's never going that down it's obviously going to be at least 40 percent that's not necessarily we, right. We would negotiate that. That's not necessarily right. If what Jimmy is saying, if that county, that city footprint continues to expand, you know, a lot of the calls that might have been made within the city, within the county, are now part of the city. And we can address that by putting that in the contract. You know, there's not currently anything in there related to the. To yeah, and the this camp. is so this is a that. contract that renews automatically. You do have the ability to pay. You know. Come into fourth year, you say we want it's time to renegotiate this contract. Well, if all y'all are talking about forty percent of what you should be right now, then that anything less than forty percent over five years is a is a, is a win. I, I believe that it is. It was a good thing that they're working with us to spread that out. We start out three years, and we step in three years. Now we're up to five. It's, as a win, win. Yeah. I wasn't aware that that was. I don't think we can argue that they that forty percent is indicative of the amount of time that the city of Mount Pleasant spends on county calls. I don't think we can argue. We've got the facts and figures to support that. We just don't like to pay that much of it. Jimmy, based on what you've said there, what what are you thinking here? I think we we probably need to stay with the the forty percent uh, and but the five year stair step. Yeah. Are you good with a five year contract? I think so. Uh, with with a cap on it. Five percent budget increase. You okay with that? I think In other words, basically Fitch's proposal. Okay. <coughs> hey, Dana, define for me what you would do. I would uh, I'd do the forty percent five-year deal, but not with no annual increase. In other words, you'd start with their current three point seven million dollar budget. That's it. Well, like I said, you know that's. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just don't see just having them, you know, have that excess to the more money. So I do a five-year deal that go to forty percent. Like I said, uh, no annual increase. So basically, you would you would be able to define exactly what the cost of the county is over the next five years. You know, we can calculate that right now. 
know what their current year budget is and you're not going to be willing to pay any beyond that, you just say this year we pay you 32% of 3.7 million. Next year we pay you 38% of it. Uh, and I think you've got that in here, don't you, Barbara? No. No, no, no. I said, I, you know, I said 32, 34, 36, 38. That's, that's fine. The five years, that's all good. All based on the current year 3.761 budget. Okay. Well, the way I the way I look at that, and I'm I'm not disagreeing with Dana or anything else, but the way I look at, at that, our budget has to increase. Our our my road budget has to increase every year. It may not be five percent. It may be over five percent. But my my road budget has to increase every year for me to continue to take care of my roads at home. And I think this really applies to them also. But that's just my thought on it. <clears throat> Jeff, any, uh, uh, you're kind of tell me what, what do you like? <clears throat> I go with the five year 40%. Uh, I guess you can put a 5% on it. So basically what Fitch had suggested, five years, 32, 4, 6, 8, 40 percent, giving them a maximum of 5 percent budget increase, which you can count on, it ain't going to be less than 5 percent. receipts from the feds right because because if the costs are in here then the revenue that they get we shouldn't they shouldn't be getting you know our whatever percentage y'all agree to in addition to the task force funds those have to be subtracted out so i think it would be i mean I, i've done i did the city of mount pleasant audit in the 90s for three years believe it or not it's a simple thing for your auditor to say here are the costs within that contract Less any task force that's not already subtracted on the two of two items. I have no problem with asking to see that, but we have been told definitively by Mikhail Reeves that that is the way that their budget would be reflected. It would be a net of receipts back from the Fed to yield right. a true uh, figure that represented no net expenditure for the task force or whatever we call it. I just think it's good that it's in the contract, that we get something. And further, I think we need to pay for audited numbers. Now, if y'all want to... Let me, let me write that first okay. note down, because all this is good. Contract includes statement assuring that 
task force expenses are net zero. We need that from their audit conductor. We don't need that to just be something that the city sends us because we can't see that in their in their financial statements. Or that's my recommendation. That's An audit that. verified evidence. Yeah. I mean the auditor could send that one page later. At annually or at the beginning of the contract or annually. what? Okay. Annually. You know, when the, when the auditor comes, comes in and does the audit, they look at all the expenditures that have been made, they look at the task force money that's come in, and then they send us a letter that says, you know, here's what the net figure is, less than your task force cost. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the concept of paying based on audited numbers. So we begin. Uh, we start off this year with a 32 percent of what? Uh, they, I think we start with their number this year because we don't know what else, we don't have a starting point. Of their 30, of their 3.7? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that would continue until? That would continue until next January because we're not going back to pay a percentage of the current year that we're finishing up, that would continue until next January. And then we have audited figures. So we start here October 1, we go to October 1, November, December, January, let's say February 1, or whenever we get that figure, and we're still paying that 32% of 3.7 million. And then at that time, we now have audited numbers, and let's say that 3.76 is actually 3.5. And so then we begin paying February 1 based on that 30, it's now 34% because we were into the 34% layer of that 3.5 million. And then that would continue on until uh, the next year. Okay. If you'll help me to write that down or, or diagram that where it, uh, where it makes sense, but um, yeah, it's really just for that four month period that you're potentially underpaying them. And then you adjust the next eight payments based on whatever that differential ended up being spread out over those remaining eight oh, we, did, we needed to catch up, but I don't think we will now that we said that 5% limit. I don't think we'll ever have to catch up. I think if there, I've been told that the city is normally under budget for the fire department. If that's the case, then we will be overpaying. So we may want to just catch up the first month instead of having to hold our money for the whole year make any correction, you know, after they get their own. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, modifications other to the contract is similar to these that we're talking about here, just uh, methodology? If, if you're going to do one of those um, fire surveys like they did in 16, we may need some agreement for are we going to pay 40% of that? Are we going to pay half of it? That may that may need to be a question that, that is within the contract. Are you going to do that every, I guess it's only five years, five years would be long enough. We would need another one before five years was up. I, think I, I would hope that something that minor could just be part of the agreed 32, 34, or whatever it is. Okay. But uh, I will tell I'll you ask. That, okay. That I did. We did contact uh, TAC yesterday. I was concerned about additional insurance. Todd Kiesel uh, believes that we do not have any additional costs for insurance. However, he you know, gave the same caveat that you hear. Um, he's not an attorney. He's not seen the contract, but based on based on how we described it to him, it's really not a lot of difference with regard to liability because we already have general liability coverage. I was just trying to think yesterday about any other costs yep. associated yep. with this.
head auditing report letter would be real keep everything real transparent. Good idea. Well, again, as it are you talking about as it relates to those out of town task force dollars? Are you talking about the audited numbers? Yeah, they're audited numbers. How much each year that's been on fire, and it'll prove what they do take on. That uh, task force too, wouldn't it? Well, I think that's yeah, always. I order. think that that's always been a given, and they've always been in favor of giving us a refund at the end of the yeah. year based upon their finalized audit. The difference in what Barbara is saying and what they suggested. They suggested you pay us based upon the proposed budget that's voted on the city council, and which probably occurs two months before October 1 begins. So you pay them all through that year based on the proposed budget and then in January, which is you know, roughly four months after the end of their fiscal year, they calculate, okay, well, we came in under budget by, you know, $100,000, so the county gets 32000 of that $100,000 back in the form of the check. That's not what Barbara is suggesting. Barbara is suggesting that the first year you pay them based on the proposed, because we don't have anything here this year. But then next year, after January, after January, we have an audit of the year before the event started. We use that to continue to pay that all during 2023. Based on the audited numbers, so that we're always looking back and paying based on that, rather than them looking forward at their projected budget with a refund at the end. What do you think is best? What do you think about it? Well, I'm perfectly fine with the way that it is, but this board thinks that it's better to do it and that it's uh, an appropriate way. As trustees of the county's money, that you pay based on the law. As soon as they get them, so we'll start out guesstimating. We don't have any other points. What they say. Yeah. 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 We get it. But they should have, normally the audits have come out in January. Yeah. So it's only four months, and we can set it back. Either way, it gets adjusted at the end or then you're a year behind. Right, but we don't want to, I, I don't think, we, I don't recommend that we have them hold our money if we know that we go to pay. Uh -huh. That's what I think. Unless that's your desire, if you want to let them hold your money, it's not my And my, my contention my is that it's not a significant amount. It's probably more. But we don't know that because we're not looking for I don't think they typically are interested in the number of them, but I don't know what they are. My assumption is there are problems in the world that are not interested in the Gentlemen, any final right. comments uh, before we try to describe this show? You're hardly in the 12 month reason cancel it was on the track. It's in the contract for either party to get out of 12 months. I don't think any of that needs to change as far as right. us well, being able to get out of Hold on, let's see what that says exactly. That's exactly what it says. You've got a termination default where you can give 60 days written notice and either that default is corrected. So let's say that the county stops paying. Well, they're going to give us notice. Hey, you're not paying as agreed. We're giving you 60 days notice. You better get this fixed or we're stopping you. It would actually be a breach of contract. Somebody's 
that protects the union. We have no target of bargaining. You know, well, therefore they have right as used herein, default by either party shall mean failure by either party to comply with any term, covenant, or condition of this agreement, which continues for a period of 60 days after written notice thereof by the city or county, or in the case of a default incapable of being cured within 60 days. I don't know what that might look like. You know, all I can see the county's default would be, you know, we quit paying. Uh, they have any number of defaults. If, you know, if they're not showing up on time or they're not taking the requisite number of equipment and firefighters or, you know, they're taking care of the city and ignoring the county uh, in the case of multiple events. I think the one that Marcus is talking about is the one before that, Section 6, uh, upon expiration of the the initial term, this agreement shall automatically renew for a successive five-year ter terms unless either party provides written notice of non-renewal at least 12 months prior to the end of the then current term. Yeah, and I know that's there, but all that has to do with is the fact that this contract automatically renews. And if you don't say, hey, in the end of year four, when you've got one year left, you say, we're not, we don't want this to automatically renew. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, you weren't referring to a, we can give 12 months notice anytime we want and back out of this deal. Cause that's yes, not, that's not it. Not here. Here. Yeah, I wouldn't change that. I don't think they would either. Okay. Uh, do any of you want me to share any of these thoughts with the chief or the city manager? Or you want to keep this quiet for a week? What would you like me to do? I mean, it's, it's going to be on YouTube anyway, so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> got if, I, if they want to know, all they got to do is watch YouTube, so I don't think that really matters that much. <laughs> Very good point. Well, that'll give the city manager a week to let this digest, and, and he'll share it, I'm sure, with his two councilmen and his chief. All right. Well, in this case, why don't you let me attempt a motion here? Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll word it. You can make the motion or whoever else wants to. I, the proposed motion that I would suggest would be that we go to the city with these modifications to the contract as it stands as of today, which is still a proposed contract. The county would propose that we honor the five-year contract. We honor the stair-step percentage increase in the county's contribution beginning October 1, 2022, with 32 percent. The following year, that goes to 34 percent, and then 36 and 38, and finally 40 percent which would go into effect at the beginning of 2020. Uh, however, we would ask that the county's contribution <coughs> in each of those years not be adjusted more than our percentage of a 5% maximum increase 
to the city's fire budget as compared to 3.761 million dollars that being the city's proposed budget for the upcoming year in addition we would work into the uh, contract that prior to an automatic renewal after five years that we reevaluate the 40 percent based on actual county fire calls in relation to the total city budget or no not that not the right word in comparison to the total city emergency calls. Secondly, that the contract also include a statement that the county would be provided documentation from the independent auditor that any task force expenditures incurred by sending city staff to other state or national jurisdictions would have a zero net impact on the city budget for which the county pays a percentage. Judge Lee, I don't know if I should speak now if I should wait. Well, help me through this. Okay, we're, well, we're going a step at a time. To, I don't think we want the task force to say other states because, I mean, what my understanding is that they're going still within the state of Texas. I don't think that's right, they do Marcus. Go, they do go, they've gone to California. Yes, they but they, they do, but they also go within the state, don't they? Yes, yes. So they that, go to Texas. The majority of these states. How, do, how does that impact what I just said? Well, you just said other states. So if they go, the majority of it's in Texas, then the task force money would not have to be backed out. If they go to another state, it wouldn't be backed out. Why do you say that? You don't want, you don't want this, uh, the budget that we're paying off of to be reimbursed by somebody else if they're sending a bunch of manpower down to Uvalde, no, I do. Texas? I do. I do want that. But I want to make sure that the numbers that we receive to pay from have that set, uh, separated out. I don't state I don't or local or inter local inter uh, state. Well, I, I want to see that whether they're going to Texas or whether they're going to because California. We, yeah. we want the same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I'm well, not sure what I said, but the implication <laughs> is that we 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 want to be sure we're not paying for any non Titus County fire protection. The next um, adjustment would have a statement that says the county would pay based on audited actual what do you call this? That, that the actual budget expenditures rather than proposed. And lastly, that it would include a statement of how any future fire protection surveys would be split. Capital outlay is included. Is that given? That's a given. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, it's a hodgepodge there, but uh, I'll. If you can put something down, Joyce, I'll try to word it as best I can when I help you with the final version. 
Okay. If you like that, commissioners can make a motion. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Fitch. Mm. Die to a lack of second. All right. Second by Commissioner Parker. Any final comments, questions, criticisms? All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Opposed. Okay. We have one opposed, Commissioner Applewhite. Motion passes. Um, I will try to get this together in a version where Ed Thatcher understands and, and Chief McRae understands so that they can be thinking about this prior to our meeting a week from today at 3 o'clock. Is there any other business under this category that we should discuss before we make a final adjournment? If there's not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Fitch. Second. Second by Parchman. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. aye.